Welcome to the Emo Social Club podcast, broadcasting to you live from emosocialclub.tv. I am Brian. And I'm Lizzie, and we're here with Anthony and Tim of the C4 Cinema. So welcome, guys. I almost called you Two-Door Cinema Club, but I know that is not who you are. Different, <laughs> different band. We were this close to calling our fans uh, <laughs> the, the C4 Cinema Club. <laughs> <laughs> we, said we decided to call them Piss Babies. <laughs> exactly. Huh. huh. Off to such a good start already. I love it. No, I mean, look, we're going to get into that. Uh, let's let you both uh, introduce yourselves, uh, your name, what you do in the band. Uh, tell us about C4 Cinema, all that good stuff. Actually, I'll go first. Uh, my name's Tim. I play drums in the band. My name's Anthony. I play guitar, but I don't record guitar. And <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I write some of the lyrics and melodies that you hear. Excellent. Why piss babies? <laughs> oh, man, straight up. Right let's up just, the top. No, let's just let's just get it out of the way. You know what? We, it was we've mentioned. been told to we've been we've been told to distance ourselves from that pretty recently. <laughs> <laughs> but but now I want to know who's telling you to distance yourself First of from all, this. Why uh, the responsible all, people no. in the band are telling us to distance? <laughs> I think They're gonna listen to this and be like, "We should have been there to be responsible." You're like, "No, absolutely <laughs> not." Listen to the rest of it. And that's literally just the four other people in the band telling me <laughs> not to say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just a dumb Twitter thing that I was like, asked. You know, it was like a yeah, yeah like you have two choices between what you can call yourselves, and. Uh, <laughs> One. So they yeah, picked that it though. one. So <laughs> like it was, it wasn't, it was their choice, right? Yeah. They all went in and they went in on that choice and option primarily. So that's on them. Yeah. They're when you're voting between a, a giant douche and a turd sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fair, fair. You know what? I, I guess we didn't hear the other bro. option. Oh yeah. I guess we didn't ask you what the other option was. So, I mean, you know what? Fair. <laughs> there was no other option. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, okay. Well, let's say that, let's say that in a perfect world, you got to keep this name. <laughs> like if your fans like it, do they like it or your fa- do they hate it? They, they love it. Right. Yeah. I feel like it. the ones with rabies do. I don't <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I mean, if they're a core part of your fan base, you yeah, got to keep them there. Yeah. You got to keep them there. It's um, it's definitely created a whole different level of uh, like just a whole nubba <laughs> level of uh, <laughs> of the type of people that like like music because you got mm-hmm. people who like bands um, and interact with them, but then sometimes you offer a little bit more and they really take that and run with it, mm-hmm. you know. So it's mm-hmm. um, one thing that we've been kind of trying to do low key is uh, get some world building in the seafloor cinema sort of like it. like uh yeah. add some cult um mm-hmm. some cult lore type stuff so mm-hmm. that um if you're a fan of the seafloor cinema you would know certain things maybe people who just listen to the seafloor cinema might not know yeah um, so adds to talking points and stuff like huh. that is the seafloor cinema a D campaign Yo, <laughs> oh my goodness, Brian. Uh, you know, if it was, then uh, the one night we would get together, we would just be spending time creating characters and then we'd never play, get back together. Yeah, <laughs> play through every song once and then it's just like, all right, no, but we're going on an adventure exactly. <laughs> next time. Next never time. Never up again. I played DD for the first time in my life the other day, really. Yeah, I never, I probably just offended so many people, but no, 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 uh, no, no, it's okay. okay. I used to bully the kids who played D&D in high school. So oh, it's yeah. because I dated a guy who wasn't a nice person. He made me go to the D&D meetings. I just, they're like, D&D meetings. Why? <laughs> and it was just yeah, because he was no. like, I have a girlfriend look. And I'm like, am I in this fucking sitcom? <laughs> <laughs> what the? Oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> I, yeah, I definitely have a lot of D and D characters. Um. <laughs> I don't. I I had no idea what that whole world was like, but uh, it's pretty cool. It's awesome. Like it's yeah. legitimately cool. Uh, I'm not good at it, but it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. 
I was like really into it. I was start. Uh, I have a friend who is doing a bunch of like D and D stuff. Still is like he's in. Um, I think he's in L.A. Still doing like a bunch of stuff with big D and D groups. And I'm like, hell yeah, I should get into this. I should try it out. So I learned it, and I was like, oh, I'll just be the DM with my friends, whatever. And then I did it, and I was like, oh, I hate doing this part of it. Oh like God, I wanted right. the fun part of it. I didn't want to like DM the campaign. I didn't want to make up the rules and keep yeah. people in line. I literally just wanted to like fuck shit up. And then, <laughs> and then I didn't ever got to do that. And so I was like, hmm, okay, I guess I don't want to play D and D. Yeah, God. it's a lot of work. New uh, seafloor D and D campaign coming, uh, maybe. Yeah, you just. Roll, <laughs> roll for eating beans. <laughs> uh, you eat beans. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> I rolled a one. You cut yourself on the can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Critical fail. <laughs> Lose Dang. fifteen health. <laughs> Dang. Critical fail. Critical. <sighs> Natural twenty. Sorry. You ate the whole can. <laughs> oh my god! Dang. Super strength. Super. You are the strength. can of beans. <laughs> Uh, I love this. You know, you never know where these conversations are going to go, but I'm like, this is up my alley. This is like right in line with like, shit I can, shit I'm like into. It's like, excellent. Oh, that's excellent. Awesome. You know, what's really funny is in our, um, in our shit post group, there's like an unnatural amount of people who are just in a common writer. <laughs> and like Tokukatsu, <laughs> I think I said that right. To- Tokukatsu. I, I, I think so, yeah. Like, like Power Rangers and like Godzilla hmm. and stuff like that, like live suit animation type stuff. Okay. So okay. I think we kind of like, just as a bunch of nerdy guys, we, we can <laughs> like, uh, we geek out about like D&D and, and stuff like that. And Toku, like, I got a bunch of kaijus and D and D figures over there. Yeah, so. I share the same love for Godzilla as Anthony. That stuff is awesome. That's really cool. I'm like, yeah. mm. like I want to talk He's about like, your band, mm. but I'm like, no. It's like, it's like, how do I like steer this conversation back to about your music as the reason we brought you on? But I'm also like, so no, I just want to talk about Godzilla. Kind of just want to talk about. <laughs> oh my god you're looking at a super yeah. rare <laughs> oh my god monster movie series a uh, space godzilla it's about 65 bucks <laughs> maybe that <laughs> that biden money better come through so i can get some more give me that looking at, stimmy for the model you're looking at my stimmy right here yeah my stimmy. <laughs> So you're looking for the inspiration to the music, huh? I'm trying. I mean, I'm like, look, we could just talk about this. I, the, the promo photo that was sent over to us and uh, uh, that we use for like all of our Instagram posts and all that. I'm like, oh, the, the space or the. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. what is going on here? Because it's beautiful and I need to know more. I love that photo. Yeah. The, the crazy thing was like, <clears throat> I don't know if it was because of that, but like. I felt like our prior Spotify picture, like we all kind of just looked unflattering. And then I changed it to that one. And like, it's just such a colorful image. And mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie, we all look kind of cuter than we usually look in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> and, and our listens pumped up like 200 listeners. And I was like, is being cute like the secret? <laughs> that wow. is. It's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Usually we just cover our faces with our hair. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god. That's what the kids like though. They're like, oh, you can't see the face. Like, that's it. That's oh, it. Oh man. Yeah. The emo well, hair right there. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Definitely had that in high school. <laughs> I but, had it in college and it was a harder time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that like picture um is for our next music video for our next single. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That uh that one definitely has a, a higher level of fan service okay. than anything oh else God. we've got. So, so is there is there a kaiju in the new one? <laughs> no, we don't have that budget. Yeah, that would have been cool. <laughs> I we, mean, we've, we've always wanted to do like a kaiju thing, like Doug and I. Um, we haven't really talked about it with everybody else, but a band recently <laughs> did that called uh, Glacier Veins, and they're awesome. Hmm. Uh, they recently did like a Tokukatsu Power Rangers thing. Um, but like, so as a bunch of other bands like uh american awesome alliance they had a a song called magnum cum latte oh my Whoa. god <laughs> yeah it's it's pretty out there but it's a really good song and they sound just like i set my friends on fire hmm. yeah that's a, that's a band that you want to reference <laughs> 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 
Who doesn't no, love I, I set my friends on fire? My- I know. I was like, I'm pretty sure we're <laughs> yeah, in the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> that was the first band I've ever interviewed. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. At a at a crappy bar out in the western suburbs of Chicago. Hey. <laughs> was that the pizza joint? In like. A, yes. I wanted to go to that show. I was actually uh, supposed to go to Chicago for that show, but I ended up in South Beloit, Wisconsin. Yikes. <laughs> It's a bit, it's a bit far you're away. You're really, you're <laughs> yeah. really out of the way there, dude. We we were told we were going to Chicago to do some roofing. Me and my, me and a buddy of mine, and I was like, cool. Hopefully, we get that weekend off because it was like a Saturday or something like that. It was that that pizza joint. Um, and I wanted to go to that show so badly. And then they were like, psych, we're not going to Chicago. We're going to fucking. <laughs> you're like, like I didn't right, want that. <laughs> right by the hotel where we were staying at, there was it was a cheese fireworks like wholesale yeah. joint Excuse yeah. <laughs> that's Wisconsin yeah. Wholesale, yeah next yeah. to it what's that plate Menards yeah is what it, there we go we yeah, love Menards here right. yeah we stand Menards <laughs> we stand Menards the deals <laughs> save big money <laughs> <laughs> Dang. like once you get over the border of Illinois especially like outside of Chicago like Indiana Michigan Wisconsin it's like do you want fireworks? And you're like, I mean, yeah, I, I, I have a place to go, though. Like, I can't just <laughs> change my fucking plans. It's like, we like, get it. It's banned here. But like, OK, but I guess like, I'll get one. I mean, if you're on your way home, why not just pick up some uh, some handy dandy uh, high grade fireworks? You know, it's explosives for your home. <laughs> Man. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I don't, do you even need these here in Wisconsin? <laughs> Everything there looks like it might catch on fire anyway. I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. We really are vibing. Oh, we're just vibing. We're just vibing. We're straight vibing. vibing. I mean, I, I will say, like, we both listened to your music earlier and we're like, okay, we're fans. Like, this is this is good. This is like exactly our vibe of music. This is the kind of shit I listen to. So at this point, we're just like, oh, we're fans. We'll just hang out. <laughs> yeah. That's Rad. Awesome. Yeah. Did you listen to the Spotify stuff or the uh unreleased stuff? Both. Yeah, oh. I listened to uh, or I watched the music videos was my thing. Uh, Dope. So yeah, I don't I think d- enough people do that because that's like where we have the bulk of our stuff is like the mm-hmm. music videos. We uh, a lot of bands don't do that either. Uh, a lot of bands will be like, here's a like live pay- playthrough music video, you know, mm-hmm. and then it, like I said, the world building part. And yeah, not yeah. We, we try to put in a lot of um, concepts and, and story arcs into our music videos. So, yeah. Uh, to make them at least rewatchable, and yeah. there's some secret stuff in some of them too. So yeah, Ooh, now the lore go goes back. deep. We're just waiting for somebody to care. <laughs> now I gotta go back. I watched a, a full-on video last night of uh, somebody took the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe and organized it in uh, in in sequential order by scene, not by movie. Oh. So like. Of all the flashback scenes at certain points, all the movies at certain points, like things that are happening at the same time. They like cut up the movies into like, this is all happening at the same time. And I'm like, God, this, this quarantine has been great. <laughs> it's a real good time. <laughs> uh, it's the lot. time. Yeah. It, yeah. It, the, that's what the I was The guy thinking. making the video put in way too much time. He's like, this took me three days to make a 20 minute video. That's on like, too much. Wow. Shit. Yeah. And, and here I am watching the, uh, the Spider-Man three YouTube poop remixes. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <Fears>. yeah. Oops, <laughs> it's pizza time. <laughs> like there's there's Yo. like an hour long like movie remix uh, <laughs> for Spider Man Three. Oh my god! I oh god! Forced my uh, my partner to watch it. <laughs> like we just oh. we just quote it like Butterfingers. <laughs> Butterfingers. I love yeah. Spider Man. Yeah. Tim's the biggest Spider-Man fan there is. I am. Fucking love Spider-Man. He's up here somewhere. I can't see myself, but he's up here somewhere. I can see it. I, oh, or it might just be something oh, red yeah, and blue. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, that one. Yeah. The red and blue one. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, but no, now I am going to go back and look through your music videos and try to find um, specific references and things that are going on in there. And be like, no, hmm. There's hmm. nothing like super duper deep. I think the one with like, the most like uh metaphors <laughs> would be uh uh would be if you were a robot that one i don't know it's just like uh a lot of the backstories in uh 
when the guy is like playing the game of life. So <laughs> hmm. I don't know. It's just, okay. yeah. But this next one will be a big, big step Ooh. up because there's some deep references. There's some cool stuff. Some man. philosophical stuff. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, just, uh, you know, wanted to make a philosophical music video. <laughs> <laughs> it's a concept album, bro. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. Oh, we, my God. <laughs> we, made, we made the concept after we made the album. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. I keep trying to do that. And the guys are like, you can't just do that. <laughs> like, you you literally I can do can. whatever the fuck I want, guys. You literally can do that. <laughs> And then, yeah, no, that's no. like fans Everybody will go cool, for it. They'll be like, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, you did. It's good. Yeah, you did this. And you're like, I made that up. That's cool. <laughs> so, uh, so is the new stuff not a switch up? Is it <laughs> <laughs> like from the old stuff you mean? Yeah. From the, from the old stuff. Like, I mean, all of our stuff has been, I guess, more or less pretty different from the last stuff, true. but yeah, true. Uh, yeah, listening you- to your unreleased stuff, I was like, this gave me like the used vibes, like vulnerable and then like some older stuff. And I okay. was like, oh, and I texted Brian. I said, hey, this sounds like the used to me. <laughs> He's like, oh, that sounds interesting. And I'm like, okay, Brian, thank you for the reaffirmation. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. I was See, now- uh, Oh, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go on. No, you go ahead. You're the guest. Why would I talk? <laughs> oh, I was going to say, the used is really cool. I, yeah. <laughs> I used to be a really uh, big fan of uh, the used. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's no. a good compliment. Yeah. Not so much anymore of their new stuff. <laughs> uh, the new stuff is, uh, but uh, like, you know, the old stuff is just really well composed. The mm. the instrumentals are, are outstanding. Facts. Like paralyzed and yeah, just facts. like, yeah. um, fuck. Uh, smother me. It's like, mm. God. I Who's feel like. One? Go ahead. No, sorry. I keep interrupting oh you. Brian. I'm the rude one. It's very hard on video calls to know. And, you know, it's like you can't <laughs> read hand. anybody's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna use the hand raise body um, emotion thing here yeah. on Zoom, and you'll be like, <laughs> "Welcome to first grade." Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Is this what everybody's dealing with? I swear. No. Honestly. You, you go. You you speak, please. <laughs> I was just I was just gonna say there was only like one song uh, after the new used stuff that I was into, but now I can't even remember what the name of it was. But uh, it was like <laughs> the single. But yeah. But thank you. Oh, the light- lighthouse <laughs> yeah. from Heartwork. Uh, was it? I I don't even. That's know. like the most recent album that came out last year. Okay, it might have might have been that. I don't know. So don't quote. Yeah. Me. <laughs> but no, I feel you. The older stuff was really really cool. Lizzie's a big fan, so Lizzie's like, oh, I know. We that was our last <laughs> show uh, before. Well, my last show with Lizzie yeah. before uh, we couldn't go to shows anymore was seeing oh, the used. Man, now it's depressing. Yeah, <laughs> that was I know, depre- right? Now it's sad. Everyone's it getting great. their memories of like, you look what you were doing a year ago. People yeah, shows and stuff, uh, and now we're all just super uh, not rude. It's rude of the internet to show us that shit. <laughs> You could just you, go, you we remember, turned that off because we thought... Remember eh. when uh, Snapchat invented Time Hop and that was yeah. the start of it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I still have <laughs> screenshots of Time Hop that'll show up in my Facebook and I'm like, super rude. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're like, I hate this. Oh, man. Uh, that should be... That should be shut off. They, they should just turn all that shit off. Like, we thought we'd do you a favor and just turn it off. It will, <laughs> it'll sometimes just pop up. It'll say like, oh, you can click to not see anymore and you'll do it. And then like a few months pass and they're like, Oh, Hey, do you remember this? Like, I didn't, I didn't want that. Thank you. I, I didn't need to be reminded of that, but thanks. Snapchat. I didn't know that. Time, time, that was like a add on, I think for oh, Snapchat. Mm, okay. Yeah. And then it just disappeared. <laughs> then it's yeah. Just gone. Yeah. And sort of like, like boomerang. Just... Is that it? Cause that was its own app, right? Oh my God. It was. Yeah. 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 I think I still yeah. have it. That and uh flappy doge. <laughs> <laughs> That was the uh, the fake one, right? Yeah, the one that before after they took the other one down. Yeah, people were trying to sell old phones with like Flappy Doge for like a couple hundred, maybe oh, a thousand right. dollars. I remember yeah. that? Yeah, oh, what I had homie try to do that. Not a good look. Samsung <laughs> S two with Flappy Doge. <laughs> oh my god! Flipping it for five hundred dollars. Jeez. You're I mean, if you sell one. it though, <laughs> you're on one. <laughs> Uh, that what I was going to say is like, I think that one thing about the used is that nobody really understood how 
like Quinn was kind of just like really good at the songwriting for that band. And then he left the band and that's when like kind of the music went down for me personally. When they released that, like that political album was like, my friend was like, dude, they use released like a political album. And like, was that I supposed to be vulnerable or was it that weird one had like Ulysses on it? It was like a weird 13 minute song. Oh Whoa. God. <laughs> you know, I couldn't say, I think it came out in like 2013 ish, 2015. I think that was vulnerable. Probably. Yeah. You're that the one, one who knows. Uh, that one was, we trust I think it's vulnerable. We trust your knowledge on this. That one was actually there's, a surprisingly good album. It was different. It was very different, though, from like traditional use. There's just some bands that I haven't totally kept up with that I used to be so into. Like, yeah. um, like I was just really into The Used and Silverstein. But mm-hmm. now I'm just like, can't be bothered to listen to them. <laughs> can't, be can't be me. Can't be me. I Yeah, I mean, same. It's It's like... It, it it like we talk a lot of shit about new blink 182 for example and it's like yeah i don't like this but there's a lot of bands where it's like you've kept making music and i didn't listen to it like mm-hmm. even though you put out a new record i was like nah i don't need to hear new used you know but if you go to their show then you're like well i need to listen to this for that and just like eh, i don't want to and then you go to the show and the use just plays like two new songs and the rest of it is from the first three albums yep yep exactly you know what's know crazy what the to kids think want. about <clears throat> like uh 15 years ago uh 15 years before that was <laughs> like, like 20 years ago 20 years before that uh the l giles band or whatever however you say that really oh, jay giles lj giles is that it oh i think it's just sure. jay giles is it lj <laughs> i don't know novel, the jay giles band Centerfold, right dude. Yeah, like yeah like 20 years ago when all this music that we're talking about came out well, I guess some of it, right? Like the used third early stuff. Mm-hmm. 20 years before that, Centerfold came out. <laughs> so it only yeah, makes yeah. sense that the used would be playing their old hits, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're dang. We yeah, go, we're we're boomering out here. Yeah, we really are. <laughs> I mean, the used isn't booming. playing like a, like a, a state fair or anything, you know? They're not playing a, like... That's when you know, you know you've reached your peak. You're like, you know. all right, I'm playing the local fairground in bumfuck oh nowhere. Like Smash Mouth when they played Charlotte. out here and they had yeah. to apologize <laughs> to the, the town because they swore. <laughs> you saw good Charlotte at the yeah, I No, okay, here's the thing. Here's a really funny story that Doug and I like to tell. Is um, <laughs> There's this... <laughs> who's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's this... Uh, so one of the first bands I remember seeing that I wanted to see uh, was Good Charlotte. And they had this guy named Dean Butterworth playing for them. And he's he's amazing. And Good Charlotte, like, totally inspired me. They, like, changed my life. Yeah. Um, it was them and Five Finger Death Punch that really did it for me. <laughs> but we don't talk oh. about Five Finger Death Punch. Whoa. We can't talk about them anymore. Those are two paths. <laughs> yeah, they're, it's it's too far gone. That first album, Doobie Slappers, though. I think. <laughs> <laughs> White Knuckles. <laughs> that shit fire. That's Soul teared up in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, bro, I'm such a metalhead. I hate emo emos. Oh <laughs> I just hate those fucking emos. Oh my god. <laughs> Put on some real fucking pants. Yeah. Oh my god. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, a boot cut jeans shit. like a man. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Wear a beanie. So <laughs> so uh oh yeah, uh Dean Butterworth. Yeah. And then the second band that I saw that I really wanted to see uh at a state fair was uh sugar ray <laughs> and okay. and right before that doug and i were watching a video of uh morrissey playing oh God. Uh, and it was such an incredible performance and all of them are walking off stage playing uh there's a light that will never go out you know just playing the same thing over until it's just the drummer and then it zooms up on him and i was like doug is that is that dean butterworth <laughs> 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 oh my god. Lo and behold, we looked it up and yeah, Dean Butterworth did play with Morrissey. Damn. We were like, holy shit. So we go to see Sugar Ray. And then I'm like, we're like sitting up there watching them play, just you know, they're rocking out to Mean Machine. And uh <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Doug, you won't fucking believe this. That's <laughs> fucking Dean Butterworth. <laughs> <laughs> and then they they like do one of those things where like the the bassist starts playing and like everybody's chilling and they're introducing everybody and they're like give it up for Dean Butterworth. <laughs> <laughs> I was like how is this guy 
everywhere. <laughs> and then, <clears throat> so we go to LA to record this next album, right? Whoop. And I'm talking to the guy that we're recording with, Courtney Ballard, and we're telling him this Dean Butterworth story. And he was like, <laughs> I just had Dean in the studio like last week. He's like my best friend. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was like, we were like, dude, yeah. you need to get Dean on the feature, man. <laughs> yeah. Tell him hop What's on. I don't doing? care what he does. He's got to yeah. be there. Yeah. He, this guy's everywhere, but Dean, yeah, Dean's amazing. One of the, a really, he's like, if you want to be a drummer, <laughs> be Dean. Butterfield. Apparently. Yeah. Fantastic, bro. Oh my God. Uh, C4 and Courtney go, made me go follow him. <laughs> <laughs> Worth his weight in butter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 what the, that's like a funny. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy. Cause one of the first bands that Doug and I talked about after we met on Craigslist, um, Whoa. was good charlotte and he was like dude you ever heard of this song called the river and i was like <laughs> <laughs> it's like for as me as a guy who really likes good charlotte i'm like you like the river <laughs> <laughs> like they have like the river is not good charlotte <laughs> that's, yeah. like, that's a venge sevenfold wrote a song for good charlotte. Oh yeah. God. i'm like why is and that then, the uh, one? <laughs> i showed him like sos and stuff but um yeah, that whole album was just Dean Butterworth at max uh, capacity. <laughs> Imagine if they were like, have you heard the song Predictable? Oh, my I, God. Both versions. Yeah. It's not a good song. I played it on what? our streams like a few times. No, 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 no. It, oh, Brian no. doesn't like a lot of things. Here's the thing. No. I'm I'm angry and I'm old. And uh, <laughs> yeah, everyone like needs to album. get off my fucking lawn. I like... Uh, <laughs> Oh you know, Lifestyles is fine and uh, 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 the record and the song Little Things is great. Game changer. But like Predictable came out and everybody's all excited about it coming out on MTV and shit. And everyone's like, this song is predictable by Good Charlotte. It's so good. Uh. And it's like Hot Topic wrote a song and Tim Burton directed it. But you couldn't get Hot Topic or Tim Burton to be involved in the production of this video. So what oh. is this? <laughs> I was Hot angry take. as a child. It was, I was... Oof, I was like, no. And then I was like, all right, it's fine. Now I'm like, all right. See, now I have the privilege of like nostalgia. So I'm like, yeah, there you go. But at the time, I'm just like, no, I don't like this new stuff. Oh my God, Brian. <laughs> the, um, Courtney actually worked with the Madden brothers. That's how he got his, one of his starts. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, Courtney recorded water parks too. <laughs> And we don't. We don't need that. We don't need that curse in our in our. See now our we're gonna talk. Now we're just gonna be these angry old people about all these bands because it's like all these pe- all these people are like, oh, you should check out uh, water parks. And I'm just like, no. This seems like it's for a youthful audience, and I don't have that energy at all. Really, <laughs> I just have beef with the people who dropped me while crowd surfing while I was seeing Creeper and water parks, and they said, "What are you doing?" And I said, "Why are you here? Why are you here? Ruining my good time." <laughs> Oh shoot! We have, have direct a, uh, impact from water parks, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Our lives first. have been directly impacted by the band Water Parks for some yes. reason. <laughs> yeah. No shade yeah. to anybody. No, just like making, you know, these are just like personal nostalgic references. I'm waiting like, for Austin oh, Knight to somehow jump in our stream, and we'll only know because it's all in caps. And I'm like, why is somebody screaming for no reason in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> he just hops in the chat. Waldorf worldwide. <laughs> just because I talk like Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> oh my god! You know, um, good Charlotte. Uh, for the not another teen movie soundtrack, they did a cover of "Put Your Head on My Shoulder." And that you can only find that on YouTube. It's, yeah. I wish that it was on Spotify, but I do kind of remember that because they were in the movie doing it, right? Yeah, they were the they yeah. were the band. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I was like, what the what is Good Charlotte doing here in this film? Why wouldn't they be there? But also, why is time. why is Captain America in this film? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of questions. You want a about banana that Sunday? <laughs> banana yeah. Sunday. <laughs> that is America's ass. <laughs> oh my god. That that was the first and last good movie for that genre <laughs> of film. Oh, I thought you were just gonna f- and put a period on the end of that sentence right there. And that I was, was like, really like wow. period. Yeah. Period. Cinema peaked with not another teen movie. Cinema <laughs> school. <laughs> uh uh, I want to ask you guys about uh I'm going to pronounce this the way that I think it's pronounced. Boquito Media. Is that how it's pronounced? 
Bocchetto? Is that what okay. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've only we were read so close to it. Yeah. yeah. Well, the letters like were there. It's just, yeah. Uh, Bocchetto Media. Uh, so I, I saw this name popped up before we, we, you know, booked you guys on the pod. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I recognize this name. And I checked it out. And I'm like, okay, I've been listening to way too much Bill Murray lately. So, like, this is clearly, like, a thing here. Um, what... What is it like? What is it? Is it a record label? Is it just a, a, a like production an incubator, company? An incubator or whatever it is? Because I was like trying to understand and I'm like, oh, uh, what is this? <laughs> uh, Jared Alonji uh, changed his channel, his YouTube channel. You remember a uh, pop punk guy like that yeah. is a nice. Oh, yeah. Bat. Yeah. Everybody knows that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we played a few of the songs on our DJ streams to be yeah, 100% I'm pretty sure. honest. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Doug actually uh, is starting to write more stuff for some of the projects nice. uh but he basically was like i'm gonna make my channel like a platform to help uplift uh artists like mm. you know all kinds of artists and stuff mm -hmm. so um yeah it's kind of uh like an informal but really cool thing that he does to help you know lift people up um with his platform and it's really rad uh, there's a bunch of really cool bands that he works with, like, you know, Bill Murray and Mailboxes and uh, Well Bones. They're mm. really rad. Yeah, I was like, whoa, this is really cool. Like, I don't in this in this world, I mean, pre-COVID and during COVID and quarantine and all that, you're like, people are are hopefully coming up with new ideas, new concepts, new ways of doing like the same stuff we've done forever. Uh, but obviously for like new artists, up and coming artists, it's like much harder to find that that inroad, especially like with YouTube and TikTok and, you know, all these other platforms where you're like, we're trying to find our audience. We're trying to get our, our creation, our art here out to the right audience. And like, how do we do that? And YouTube seems to be like probably the best place I'd say, like music wise, it's probably one of the better places to like get an audience to see what you're making, your music, your videos, whatever it is. So I was very, very curious about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really anywhere is a good place, honestly. Um, you know, there's always a trending social media like like TikTok. Um, mm -hmm. But as long as you can get like popular on at least one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. Um, there's there's always like a band that's really big on something, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. So um, and YouTube ain't so bad uh, to have a lot of views on. Uh yeah, YouTube's almost become a verb, like Google. Like, just yeah. Google it. Yeah. Just YouTube it. So the fact yeah. that that's, like, such a household thing, if you're big on YouTube and someone can just, like, look you up and you're that accessible, that's, like, a really important tool for, like, yeah. an artist or a band or whatever. Once you start, like, typing it into the, the search bar and it's like, oh, you meant this? And you're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, bro. Oh, yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what I needed. And then it like just adds a bunch of words after and you're like, no, that's not what I need. <laughs> Delete. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, you took me to the wrong band here. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I thought that was really cool. And the, the, obviously, like I said, the video is really cool. So I was like, oh, all right. Like, I'm yeah. curious what's going on here. Yeah, he, uh, he, he helps us uh, a lot by uh, hosting our music mm -hmm. um, under the, the Boketto brand and uh also the videos on his YouTube and uh, he helped us set up the Kickstarter and everything. Mm -hmm. He he really was a driving force and like everything that, that really took us to the next level. So he's been just the greatest. Mm -hmm. He's the best. What kind of like propelled you to do a Kickstarter? Cause I feel like a lot of bands haven't done that recently. <laughs> I think when Kickstarter first came around and like GoFundMe, when those things kind of pop up, a lot of bands, a lot of artists are like, let me use this. And now I think like you were the only band that I've probably seen do a Kickstarter in the last like year and a half, two years, honestly. I've seen a few other bands do it. Um, probably not for as much money as we did it before. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we just really like money. <laughs> oh my God. It's fair. It's fair. I like money. He said that's yeah. stimmy. No, that's, that's stimmy. <laughs> Yeah, we needed Listen. an extra stimmy because we already spent the... <laughs> we, uh, All those Godzillas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were supposed to go on a on a national tour with Emo Night. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and in between the Emo Night dates, 
like the emo night dates we were supposed to get a lot of money for every <laughs> night that we played um we we're gonna go like philly and jersey and new york and nashville and stuff like that um and then play regular shows in between but uh obviously that didn't happen so we needed to find a different way to get a lot of money <laughs> really fast <laughs> yeah fair uh, uh because I love, I that would have paid for the whole album <laughs> is that that tour basically mm. but since that couldn't happen we were like brainstorming mm. hmm. i remember like uh well i mean like amanda palmer back in the day doing kickstarter for her record and making just a fuck ton of money on like mm. Uh, the Venetia Fair was another band that I remember. Yeah, they're so did, like, awesome. Yeah, I actually, yes. <laughs> the Venetia, Venetia Fair, Fair. Um, we all actually were at a Venetia Fair show, but didn't know each other except huh. for <laughs> Tim and Seth. Yeah, but uh, you, there. you wanted to go. Yeah, that and so did Seth. Oops. Um, so Doug and I went together. It was like Stolos, the Venetia Fair, and mm. like Hell the Sun or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Birds. Yeah, yeah it was a, a lot like birds. Yeah. Yep. It was like was one of those tour. one of those peak like Swan Core day yeah. show. Like back when Swan Core was like really <laughs> fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Hell the Sun, like it was like just dropped that album and Adola was still playing songs from Great Glass Elephant. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, and so the Venetia Fair came, and like the guy's crazy. He was like walking on mm -hmm. people's heads and swinging his mic, and he, oh my god, he, like threw it in the audience, and it hit me straight in the forehead. Oh, I love and, this story. Yeah, and then I he was like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry," and he like stopped singing and was just like, "Just meet me out in the back after the show. I'll give you like a shirt or something." And I had like, <laughs> bro, for like two weeks, I had a grill mark on my forehead. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> And um and and Justin recalls it as I, yeah I saw like a little girl in the front getting hit with them <laughs> <laughs> just because I've always had the same blonde hair yeah but um <laughs> yeah he was really cool he he I met him outside afterwards uh is at a pizza joint called Luigi's Slice and uh, mm. he was like here's the CD and uh, it was the really good CD that they had. Yep. <laughs> yep. Every every sick, disgusting thought we've got in our brain. It's yeah, too long the, to say. The concept <laughs> album with like five different concepts in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the only way to have an album at that time. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. They they really did something else with that music. They were really going for that like MCR panic at the disco type yeah. beat. <laughs> type beat. Type beat. Uh I went to that show when they came through a suburb of Chicago. And I was really stoked. It was like one of the last shows I've seen before I moved. I, I worked in uh, Sweden for a while and I was like, I'm moving there. So I won't be able to see you for, you know, a while. And I'm like, I'm so excited for this show. And we get there and they're like, yeah, uh, Benny's sick. So Venetia Fair is not playing. And Yay. after that tour, they broke up. And I was like, well, this is great. This is fantastic. <laughs> wow. That uh, sucks, bro. He, he was chilling in the audience, though. So I went up to him I'm like, hey, like I'm really big fan i'm bummed you guys aren't playing and couldn't he wasn't speaking i guess he was just like saving his voice so he wrote everything on a notepad and oh so we literally had like a 30 minute conversation of him just writing notes and like we were just going back and forth like talking about stuff i'm like this is cool i wish i was watching you nice. play but this is still very nice like this you're still a very nice. nice person that's cool uh, it took the time to do that though yeah. yeah and then he threw a mic at my head and i was like okay well. <laughs> <laughs> like you're not even classic playing Benny. classic though <laughs> Classic Benny. Uh, they also did an interview in Chicago. Uh, this It was like a Fearless Records thing. It was just in Fearless Records. It's like Fearless Radio, but they're not related to the record label at all. It's really... Oh, what? I don't know why. Yeah. It's like a like a Chicago radio interview thing. I don't know. Uh, and they just went on and just like said some of the worst things I've ever heard. Like not offensive, but just like... Uh, offensive <laughs> oh okay oh, like oh that was right around the like lost profits shit and oh, oh god so they were like referencing that a little bit and i'm like oh not a good yeah. look that's bro. a big hell not there <laughs> yeah get off and the th stick get yeah. off shut get the off, fuck up cut the mic yeah it isn't uh, working and then we played a show with them like two days later <laughs> and i was like okay cool all right well you know this is life now yeah this is life <laughs> Those guys, uh, those guys are uh, playing the same show as we are. Right. Um, I'm nervous. Oh my gosh! Wow. 
Yeah. So we're big fans of the Venetia Fair on this pod. Yes. So as you can tell, we're like, That's great. yeah, let's talk That's about great. it. <laughs> yeah. The Venetia Fair was super rad. Yeah. That's, I, I feel like <clears throat> there's always, so we're kind of like, we're not like the old guys in the scene, but we're like the medium guys in the scene. And there's like yeah. much younger people that we're, <laughs> we're like, <laughs> unfortunately influencing right now uh you know <laughs> like like we're directly re- like we're directly like the people after like stolos and birds and hell the yeah. sun right yeah you know um and so there's the generation that's going to come after us musically mm. um where is i going with that <laughs> jog my memory you're influential <laughs> for children I where you were going to <laughs> yeah yeah so uh my brain said, <laughs> <laughs> and then there was static. Sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, there's a lot of bands that like, like our contemporaries right now, like, uh, I met a Yeti and you know, bands like that. It's a um, great band name. <laughs> <laughs> we, like there's probably some bands that n- younger people don't really know about that really inspire us. You know, like there's the basics like PM today, uh, or Doug's favorite. in Aviate. <laughs> the Venetia Fair, like bands that almost had it, you mm-hmm. know. Dang. <laughs> but like, probably like not a lot of people are gonna like. They're not gonna go down in super history, you know. It's mm-hmm. just like, if you know, you know, and that's yeah. really cool, you know. That that's what kind of makes you like, in on in on it. <laughs> <laughs> in on it, yeah. Like if yeah. somebody was at an emo night and they're like, "Hey, do you know the Venetia Fair?" You'd be like, "I got you." <sighs> yeah, you'd be like together. Yeah. I'm you'd not be like, play, yeah, you're but cool. I'm on your side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're my contemporary. Yeah. You're my contemporary. <laughs> I've always thought there were bands that are like, this is a band's band and this is a fan's band. Just very hard to say. Like same deal. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like in Aviate. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, like the Venetia Fair or uh or I guess one of their contemporaries, like Foxy Shazam, you know, it's like, mm. this is a band that maybe doesn't like hit with a lot of audiences. Like there are people that are big fan. Like I love both of those bands and I still listen to them pretty, pretty much all the time, but I'm not like, Oh, this is going to be something that like hits that everyone's going to be into. This might be for specific audiences. This might be something that some people are really passionate about. And other people are very not passionate about it. Uh, and no, no shade on anything. Cause I think that there is room for all types of music out there in in every realm and everything has a fan base and everything deserves to be heard. And like I said, I love those bands, but like, you know, maybe they won't be as popular as, uh, I guess panic at the disco. I don't know what would be their like their contemporary. It's like, what is like one step above Foxy Shazam or like who did panic influence that then took their influence and did something else with it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's the best (laughs) I can think of right now on the spot. (laughs) Like, uh, yeah, in 20 years, I don't know who's going to be able to name drop like Folly or, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, maybe yeah, like Botch or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just don't know. Uh, yeah. It's like, are these bands that were just like influences or are these bands that are, you know, just for the people who heard it at the time? Like, is there something bad about like these bands who like didn't go on, but influenced other bands to do something else? Like that's still valid and that's still cool. Mm-hmm. It's something to say about uh, the age that we're living in, because uh, I don't know, we're living in like a golden age of music, but also at the tail end of a dark age. Yeah, true. Yeah. So yeah, I just think there's something really cool um, uh, about like bands that don't have anything, like lost media. You know, mm-hmm. like um, I think of myself less as, as a boomer and more of like a renaissance <laughs> kind of person. <laughs> oh my God. All right. It's like, All right. I love that. We're just like, completely skipping so many. Different, you're like, actually I am a renaissance man. I'm a renaissance. renaissance like, man. like Tim's dad. I would love to hear your dad's music, man. <laughs> you know, like I know. On tape. Yeah. Or, or Doug's dad, I, like lost tapes, you hmm. know? So, um, and so we're lucky that we have these sort of things. It's like, some bands just don't have it, you know, (laughs) but everybody Mm -hmm. deserves, uh, like Fall Out Boy said, everybody deserves the flame. (laughs) (laughs) Direct quote. Direct quote. Yeah. That's what the Fall Out Boys said. The Fall Out Boys. (laughs) Peter Wenceslas in the chat, throwing it out. Oh my God. (laughs) That's his full name. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, actually that's crazy. It's like, 
there's no like looking up live videos for bands. It's like, man, I wish I could just find a video of the tour I saw them on. And now yeah. it's like, that's everything in the future. There will always be a video from like every single tour that bands yeah. do in the future. And if there's not, there should be. And if you're a band listening, do it. It's, it's going to be so worth it. Like in the future, like you're saying, it's like, Hey, we can watch all of these things, all that nostalgia, these videos will blow up. Like, yeah. Oh man, I went to this tour 20 years ago. You should check it out. Here's literally the entire show. <laughs> I would hate to make a, 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 a mean prediction, but <laughs> that's great until the websites hosting it are uh, dismantled. True. Fair. Yeah. True. So yeah. also keep the files. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you can just back it up, back up the files that you like so that you can show people when you're older. Be like, yeah. ah, yep. This is my 15 terabyte <laughs> thing of everything I liked in my 20s. You're going to love this hard drive. <laughs> Come on, you kid. Had you're just going to like the iPod. You're going to hook go. up the brain helmet on your kid and like <laughs> hardwire fucking everything you've ever liked when you were younger. <laughs> They're going to just. <laughs> oh it's going to be like, hold it. Like, I'm tired of this, grandpa. And you're going to be like, too damn bad. Too just bad. hit the button and Yo, just go. <laughs> oh my God. That's such a mean. <laughs> That's it honestly that like their eyeballs open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like style. Yeah. Seriously. Wait. You're going to watch every season of the first couple of seasons of SpongeBob. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, but then it'll still be playing, bro. You're going to watch Camp Lazlo and you're going to like oh, it. God. Oh my God. That's a that's, big throwback. That's throwing it back. It's not even the deepest. <laughs> I know. It's, it's like Mr. Meaty. What the fuck was that? That oh was like God. nightmares. Keep going. Yeah. When, when we go on tour, I make the guys listen to uh, like fake talk <laughs> show stuff. So like the GTA radio or like one thing that we all really <laughs> like is uh, Cranky Anchors. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's a middle that's school. That's a middle yeah. school. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, one day it'll just be pumping nostalgia directly into our our veins, and we'll just be—I mean, that's I guess no. The South actually, Park reference it's just like a Watchmen. It's just a perfume called nostalgia that sometimes they turn into pills, and it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all right. <laughs> then it's okay. Be, yeah. And then it's okay. Consumed media. Consume it. All caps with spaces in between every letter. Oh man, <laughs> that's how you do it. That's the only way to know that it's real. Consume. <laughs> uh, no, go ahead. Sorry, I feel like you were going to oh, play I, off my I, joke. Yeah, well, I just read the chat. Eat, but um, yeah. <laughs> was there any other points that you guys wanted to touch? Um, At, do, yes. do you want to talk a little up. bit yeah, more of your hanging out? Yeah, exactly. But do you guys want to talk about your your new album more about it? There is if no you album. Can? Oh God! <laughs> is that the concept? There there's, is no there's, record. There's, there's, there's a lot of, it's a very long titles too. So I know people are into that. And I know there's a lot of music mm. writers who are like, we need to stop the long song. It's like, no, you need to just sit down and be quiet is what you need to do. First of all. <laughs> oh, yo. Uh, huh? Go ahead. Go oh, wait. Ahead. Sorry. I was reading the chat. Oh, <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely get to that um, later on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What, oh, what yeah. Druid sent? Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm sorry. What was the question again? Um, <laughs> what are you? Just tell us more about this upcoming album that you have coming out. Um, if whatever you can, and also like address the fact that you have such long song titles in an era of like music journalists <laughs> saying we need to end long song titles, and we're like, no, just be quiet, let it happen. That's yeah. What the kids like <laughs> the two wolves uh, raging inside of me are the uh, there's one wolf that. W wants to just have a one title band with a one one word song so he can read it all without it adding a dash yeah. and then also pro possibly read like in parentheses guitar playthrough <laughs> you know like, <laughs> like, like come on bubble wow i'll click on that you know yeah. like yeah there's there's like that's like part of the new age of information is just fast mm -hmm. everything in a short blurb right now mm -hmm. put it in my veins you know yeah. but I feel like as a renaissance man, there's just something <laughs> there's just something about more information in something, you know, mm. like I would rather have more from something <laughs> like just layers. You know, I love lasagna. Oh, my God. Oh my God. You know, it's onions so, and lasagna. They have layers. Yeah, we're definitely a bunch of old heads. So 
we go back to the <laughs> fallout boy panic at the disco era yeah <laughs> there's a lot to say and honestly if you rock it man just do it you know Fair. like people are gonna like what they're gonna like or dislike what they're gonna dislike but like we're doing stuff that we like mm. and i feel like it, you have to believe in something first before anyone else is going to and if you don't really believe in what you're putting out no one's gonna like that you know yeah. they want to be a part yeah. of something that they feel is bigger and uh if you can lead that charge i guess i don't know just do what you love be you know genuine be genuine yeah i've we freaking love what what it is and like i have seen the actually like let's stop this long yeah. name stuff it's like you know what just let people like what they what they like you know and if you're being disingenuine, it's probably going to come off as disingenuine and it won't work as well. But mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. It's like Anthony said, be genuine. Yeah, I uh, I also think there's that space where you're like, oh, all these bands that I used to listen to did long song titles. I'm not going to do long song titles. And then there's a there's a place where everyone's doing short song titles and you're like, man, I'm going to do long song titles again. It's been too long. So it like, yeah, it keeps going in these it, waves. Like, Dang, yeah. Me. Yeah. Like when the emo nostalgia comes back and, and all these like emo hip hop artists start going, no, fuck it. We're doing long song yeah, titles. Like, Let's go. Yeah. It, like just change. always comes back, bro. Really does. Yeah. And there's always like that one band that has to like keep it going. And then you're like, oh, hey, we were on top of it. Like we always did that. We always were that band. And now look at us coming back proud of us guys <laughs> <laughs> man no seriously though yeah i agree with that mm. uh now i'm just reading chat sorry drew it always oh posts these like yes. long long paragraphs and i'm like oh fuck we always read them off in like really uh weird voices on stream and i'm like it's hard to do that while we're literally recording a podcast but uh we'll do it later yeah yeah we'll do another mm-hmm. <laughs> So there's no record. Is there no? Is this a concept that there's, there it's is just no all album? The concept in our in the minds. Uh, well, we we're going back and forth on a few things about it, um, and we're just working with some external forces. Mm-hmm. Uh, hmm. So it's like it's like a uh, levitating pizza dough. You know, we tossed it up <laughs> and uh, we're waiting for it to come down. So <laughs> we're just taking the time to make sure it's really, really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know especially because a bunch of people from the Kickstarter believed in us and gave us money, you know, to like, it's like, everyone's a part of this now, you know, Mm -hmm. and I don't want to release anything that's like subpar or something people won't be happy with, but uh, we're just really making sure everything's going to be like the joke is, or or not joke. uh, There's no album, but, uh, (laughs) but, um, but yeah, no, it's just, we're, we're really like fine tuning everything and, figuring it out right now and like you said external forces and uh you know i mean i love the metaphor that there is no album yeah. like when it's released and you're like all this behind the scenes stuff and it's like all done and you're just like what do you mean there is no record and then people are listening like, to something and you're like i could have just lied yeah <laughs> there is no album <laughs> <laughs> we sent you something i don't know what you guys listen to yeah. i mean it yeah, could be it. literally about. now be second guessing Did yeah you guys so um did you guys have like a favorite from the new? Yeah. Lizzie. I don't remember any of the like actual song <laughs> titles because they were so They're, long. Let me pull it up. Okay, Ooh. so we have a we have a gag, right? There's oh, so no. there's a lot of different sounds on on the new album. Yeah, there and, are. And there's one specifically that sounds like a bionicle song. Like, it's, <laughs> <laughs> like it should I be heard a bionicle. And I was like, oh, this is like you know, I get it. It kind of gives me this like the normal to use, but then it gets kind of like more electro. And I was like, oh, and then I was like, oh, this kind of reminds me of like some crab core type stuff. And I'm like. <laughs> Oh what is going God. on here? Like, I like it, but I'm like, what is going on here? It's pretty different. Yeah. yeah. This this will... album is more of um, a show of what we can do. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so it's a lot of different palettes. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I really liked Glimmer. And then okay. I also really liked um, A Thousand Ways to Say You're Okay Every Day. I just want to let everyone know these are very long song titles or they're just longer words that you wouldn't be ready for. <laughs> we went, we went with really Brian, short ones and really long ones. Yeah. yeah. I did enjoy the horns one. 
horns. There's two. Well, yeah, there's... Glimmer has horns, but so does Rayla. Yeah. Yeah, Rayla was the one, and I texted Brian. I said, "There's horns in this. You're gonna yeah. like it." That's that's the one with Andy Sizek. Yeah, that goes off. Hmm. And uh, uh, it was like the guy from Real Big Fish that did the horns. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Huh. <laughs> that one Glimmer. Yeah. Huh. So there's some star power. <laughs> I wonder if it's the guy that I interviewed from Real Big Fish years ago. <laughs> Possibly. Maybe. I wasn't Maybe. playing on the C4 Cinemas uh, new record that doesn't exist. <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the real thing is uh, the album exists, but the single at the end of the Find Yourself single <laughs> does not exist. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Man. I love it. That'd be really meta to do. Now I'm like, I'm like concepting like, okay, you make a record and then you're like, there is no record. And then you put it out and people are like, what am I listening to? If there isn't, if this doesn't exist, what is, and like what they am I doing? Pushing their entire existence. There was, <clears throat> so I've been a big fan of these guys called F and D films. And I didn't realize that we were kind of going off the same wave as them, but hmm. they, uh, they made a, they had a Kickstarter for a movie uh, called it's all good. Um, and it's free on Amazon if you have Prime. And they're just really funny guys. They're like classic YouTube dudes. And they're from Chicago, actually. So, huh. yeah. Well, uh, we love them then because they're from Chicago. Yeah. Yes, and I love them because I love Chicago. <laughs> there we go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't know. They, they did like the whole meta thing. They're like, we're not making the movie. Thanks for the 200 grand or <laughs> like 75 grand. <laughs> yeah. And then the movie is the movie... The movie is about them not making the movie. Oh my god! <laughs> so, Shoot, that is meta. You, yeah, That's you should. Super fucking it's meta. Definitely, really worth a watch and supporting small guys like that because. Yeah. yeah. I I didn't realize because I had, I remembered them doing that, but I never watched the movie or anything. And then I remembered like a week ago, I was like, oh shit. I'm gonna buy that movie with my stimmy money. <laughs> my stimmy money. <laughs> but, but it's on Amazon Prime for free. So yeah. Oh yeah. I'm always into like, like I'm like, oh, I can do something meta with this, and I'm like, you have to relax. I had yeah, this you little do have concept. To relax sometimes. Relax. It was like, Chad. it was like two in the morning. I had had a certain number of beers, and of I course. was messaging Lizzie, and I was like, okay, I have this really, really good idea. The podcast is this whole thing that's happening on the front, and then behind <laughs> it, there's like oh shit, we're actually in like a post-apocalyptic world. But you won't know it if you just watch the, like the YouTube videos and all this, like all this is happening, like everything is real. And then you find out like, wait, this entire podcast has been happening like a hundred years in the future. Like this is fucking crazy. And I'm like, hey, and then Lizzie like responds to me the next day and is like, um, so what is this? And I go, yeah, don't, don't, none of that. None of that. That's, that's <laughs> See, and so you got upset with me for talking about <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. European views on immigration last night. Like, this is too that much. I'm like, okay. Brian, it's yeah. one in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. This is that's the never. only thing I've sent yeah. you that's made fucking sense at one yeah. in the morning. We're like, oh let's just, God. let's just, let's accept that these messages happened. Let's go. You had this idea. It exists. And now we will move on from it and never revisit it. That's that's what everybody does to me. That's actually <laughs> like a that's a super Renaissance thing because that that was really popular in the sixties and seventies with stuff like that. I don't know if mm-hmm. you ever heard the uh, the Star Wars uh, like radio special. No, no it's I didn't. really rad. It's got all the cut stuff from George. Like, I'm not like a Star Wars fan per se, but I'm a George Lucas fan, if that okay. makes okay. sense. He okay. is a chaotic man. He's so there are things to be fans genius. of. Yeah. yeah. Unbridled. That Unbridled. Man, <laughs> that man is genius on levels that people have small pea brains and can't understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Like, he, he really thinks of everything. Like, of all the Star Wars movies, the things that people are always coming up with new points to talk about mm-hmm. are this the prequels the originals you know like <laughs> they're always yeah. thinking of new stuff to talk about you know with those movies like you know not your opinion is your opinion about the movies you know that's all i gotta say but people are always talking about them and uh this radio show is just like it's got all the cut stuff from from the first movie and you're like wow big stark lighter and uh wedge antilles like they have like real parts you know and the way he talks about like poetry and how like events and all the movies like come back around, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. He's done that since day one in the, fr- yeah. like, oh my God, there's a, uh, like a pod racing scene that he goes over. Like, really? yeah, where um, it's him in wedge and wedge or big stark lighter. And they're, they're like racing people. Um, and they have to like get their like sky hopper through like a really small hole. So it's got like the pod racing element and it's got the whole thing that comes back around where him and uh, Biggs Darklighter are at the end, you know, trying to get their photon torpedoes inside of the yeah. the shaft at the, the Death Star. And I don't know. It's just really cool because Biggs is like the master. But yeah. Luke has become the master. And, you know, of course, Biggs dies. I don't know. I, I just <laughs> love Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. It's really good. It's I like love four that hours poetry long. thing too. Oh god! Oh my god! <laughs> that sounds about right. I love uh, uh, the poetry thing. Yeah, you're, you're very right. Like, I I sometimes hate like the new trilogy because I'm like, well, I sometimes hate it. I I don't mm-hmm. love all of it, but uh, and I didn't see the last movie because I was like, that's fine. I don't need this. I cried. I don't need it. Okay, so <laughs> I. Uh, Dang, I, it was all right. I will, I will say that I really, really, really liked The Last Jedi. Like, I really liked that movie. It would be in my, like, top two of all Star Wars movies. So if my opinion, therefore, is completely like, all right, cool. Well, you can keep talking. I'm just stop listening. Uh, that's totally fine. I understand. <laughs> like, I realize that is a very spicy take in the Star our, Wars our universe. Our viewership is about to drop in this podcast yeah, because yeah. of Brian's takes. Oh, no. Ooh, okay. we hate this podcast now. <laughs> Shit. Um, but there, there's like something about that one because it breaks that sort of like repeating process of Star Wars. Like, I feel like when J.J. Abrams made the the first one, it's like, let's just basically do that again. And that <laughs> bothers me compared to like what George Lucas was doing with it, where he's telling new stories using uh, reminiscent themes. Mm. It's like, no, J.J., you literally made Star Wars again. Like you just wanted to make Star Wars again. <laughs> and like we didn't need Star Wars again. We needed new Star Wars for new new kids. And that's why I, I liked fine. Last Jedi. I would have been fine with uh, just them doing the Yuzhan Vaughn arc, the, the invasion. Like, <laughs> huh. see to see uh, Coruscant's moon slam into Chewie. Holy, would be <laughs> would be intense, you know. Oh, but God. we're not ready for that. We're not ready for it. We're literally mm-hmm. only ready for the same shit we're already used to over again for more money. And- yeah, yeah, and it bothers me. Yep. Like, let's do something new. Let's create something new here. <laughs> that okay. So, um, you know that meme where it's like the the like the super Chad guy like enjoying something, and then the one like the guy with the neck beard like oh yes. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like, yes. So I don't know, like me going uh, making the same shit over and over, dude. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then Godzilla versus Kong. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> dude, so great. Yeah. <laughs> Super Wojan, mad hype. All right, you know what? That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, everybody's got their like one thing. You know. Yeah. I'm like, let's make new shit, and then they're like, I'm like, when is Final Fantasy VII remake two coming out? Oh my god, Brian! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Give me oh, the rest man. of the story that I already have played like five times as a child they, and remember step by step that. forever like super meta right like they added like shadows of a, a like the past like dimension or something like that to mix into the storyline with a bunch of different side characters so it's like yes just in case spoilers for a 30 year old game <laughs> oh my god <laughs> uh and also this the new game but basically yeah the the game uh the game posits that the entire time that it's happening, Aerith knows the entire plot of the first game. And I'm like, that's some cool ass shit. Let's, let's play this one out. And she literally like talks to you as though like, as soon as we get past this point, it can be anything. And it's like, okay. So you basically like played the whole thing that you just already knew and experienced. And then it's like, yeah, that's it. Like we're not making that again. And I love that like creator, like talking to you through a character in the game. I'm just like, I'm ready, Earth. I'm ready. I'm ready to be heard again. Yeah. I think that's pretty cool for replayability with the game. Uh, I don't personally own a 
a console. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not. The, I'm not the market. <laughs> I don't either. So we're we're all on the same page here, except for Brian. Yeah, oh. I'm just playing Halo Three Master Chief Collection. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. They announced uh, that there's going to be a PS5 version of it today, and they're like, and there's a Ufi chapter, and I'm like. <sighs> Dude, I'm gonna buy your fucking system. Okay, all right, this is great. Dang. It's fucking giant PS5, all white, looks like a spaceship. I don't want it. It looks like it's it looks huge, like a humidifier. Bro. I don't want it. Mm. I mean, it'll work well in your decor. So, all of my decor is matte black except for these two walls that literally match the PlayStation chair, Five so behind me <laughs> and got my chair. That. Uh, son <laughs> of a. Anyway, uh, we're at about an hour, so uh, I, I just want to be sure that we give you the opportunity here to throw out all your plugs where everybody can find you on the internet, where everybody can stream everything, and uh, we'll keep talking on Twitch for a little bit, answer everybody's questions they've thrown out in the mm-hmm. chat, so we'll make sure that uh, we get to all of your, your chats. If there's anything else you want to throw out in there while we do this, go for it. Um, but before we do that, yeah, where can we find you? Where can everybody check you out on the internet? Uh, go to your favorite website and type in the seafloor cinema or just seafloor cinema and we will be there <laughs> we're on every website yes God. even the one you need a subscription for Ooh. <laughs> yeah all the good ones Spotify Instagram Twitter Facebook everything well there you Thank go you. that was a really easy plug <laughs> yeah there we go Yeah, we're everywhere you just type in our name yeah literally yeah. everywhere <laughs> and we probably have exclusive content on that website too mm-hmm. <laughs> are you uh, are you on TikTok yeah we're yeah uh, we're definitely on TikTok I was uh, I, that's uh, how I got in contact with uh, Lizzie there yeah because oh. I'm the main one who runs our TikTok yeah yeah <laughs> I've just been kind of depressed and I haven't been on TikTok for like a week or so. <laughs> hey, that's fine. Like, are you also shadow banned? Because we are shadow banned. <laughs> that happens so much. You know, I don't even know what that <laughs> like. I don't even know it's if that's like really real. It. It, it's just like you post and then like your stuff doesn't like get any views or it gets like under 200 views. But like I nobody really knows why or how it happens. You just kind of like hope it stops. I think TikTok does a thing to you when you first make an account where they push your views and then after a while they rescind them Mm -hmm. sort of like you know getting people hooked i think that's the thing that they do i don't think there's a such thing as shadow ban i just think they're just pushing you a little too hard in the beginning for those views you know yeah because people are really in tune with what they like and want to see and sometimes you don't always hit that and uh i rather than chalking it up to shadow ban i think it would just be uh just how the system is really that's yeah. why i'm telling brian to go on people no. like the tatted up guys with piercings no, I, I have neither so come on brian i have nothing to say <laughs> <laughs> i have nothing for these children every time i go on there i'm like oh i could do that and then i watch somebody do it and i go i hate that person i'm not doing that <laughs> like i don't know i just gotta get I, I think i'm just like like there's something in my brain that is literally like get off my lawn about it like i can't Get I can't do it. Lawn. You like, don't even have a lawn. I know. Which is why I'm like, <laughs> why do I, I shouldn't care? I, it's not my lawn that they're on, but I'm still mad about it. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm just too old. It fucking sucks. It's the worst. Don't grow up, kids. Anyway, <laughs> thanks to our guests, the C4 <laughs> <cinema>. <laughs> Uh Yeah. Thank you guys for coming on. Really appreciate it. This is a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We love your band, so we want to tell everyone, yes, go check out the music that's already up. Check out the videos uh, when the record that does maybe couldn't exist uh, comes out. <laughs> Manifest, it. you know. Once it manifests inside of your brain uh, through the technology afforded to us from the uh, the government stimmy, uh, go ahead and check it out. And um, <laughs> uh, I would like yeah. the, a shouts outs to, to Biden. Boy, you better run that pocket, man. I'm trying to get that skimmy. I'm coming for you. You've been real quiet. <laughs> oh, I love it so shouts much. Shouts to Biden. Shouts. Shouts to Biden. Give me the money you owe me. Uh, much love to C4 Cinema. Uh, go, go listen. Go check them yeah, out. Yeah, go listen. Yes, please. <laughs>